Okay, it's it's three fifty, and I want to begin the presentation. Hello, everyone. My name is Yang Xie, and from Hitachi, and I will give a presentation about a uh, high security API management infrastructure use Apache Camel. And now in Japan, it's the uh, middle of the night, and I will do my best to do this uh, presentation. Okay. I, I am a software engineer at Hitachi, and I am engaged on the technical support for Keycloak, 3Scale, and Apache Camel. And I am also an open source contributor for Keycloak. Let me show you the contents of this presentation, and I will present in this order. In the first chapter, I will introduce an API management infrastructure using Camel and Keycloak. A patch Camel that is known as a tool of integrity, heterogeneous systems also can be used as an API gateway. By adding Keycloak as an OS 2.0 authorization server, we can create an API management infrastructure providing the following functions as the picture shows, such as reverse proxy, protocol convention, mashup, flow control, or token insurance and management. And also, we can show the API documentations by Camel. And if uh, if you uh, use a compo com compo uh, component as Prometheus and Grafana, you can you also can confirm the metric metri metri metrics by our API management inf infrastructure. In the introduced API management infrastructure, we use Keycloak as a OS 2.0 authorization server. And now let me show you what Keycloak is. Keycloak is an identity and access management OSS who, whose community is managed by Red Hat. And although it can be used for web single sign-on, it also can be used as an OS 2.0 authorization server. In chapter two, I will show you the drawbacks in the API management infrastructure introduced. Although the API management infrastructure can protect itself by using token insurance and management, there are also three drawbacks of its security, as the picture shows. All drawbacks will cause API abuse. The job, the drawback one is the API management inf infrastructure only do minimal validations for access tokens such as signature, signature and expiration time. And drawback two is the API management infrastructure have no management of user success. And drawback three is in API management infrastructure, there is no provision for access token stealing. Now I will explain the drawbacks in detail. The first drawback, only to minimal retention for access token. An access token can be invalidated before its expiration time. So if API management infrastructure only does minimal validations such as signature and expiration time, invalid access token within their expiration time hasn't been reached will be considered to be valid and attackers can use them to access the API. The, these pictures show the attacker use a invalid access token within its expiration time to access the API and he will have a response with 200 status code. And here's a second drawback. No API access management. With no management of API access, anyone can access uh, API with full authority. 
in this picture, we show a user who just has a red authority, and he can also do the right, the right, <coughs> also uh, write the data to the API server. Use the writing, use the uh, API for writing data. And here's the third drawback. With no provision for Excite token stealing, attackers can use a stolen Excite token to Excite the API. And it shows in the picture, the attacker steals the access token and use it to Excite the API and he can Excite the API successfully. For the drawbacks, we did some security enhancements and let me show you them. OS 2.0 and its related standards define three mechanisms and that can be used for overcoming the drawbacks. They are token introspection, scope check, and OS MTLS, and all of them are supported by Keyblock. With the support of Keyblock, we can implement the mechanisms by developing Cam camel application. Now let me show you the mechanisms and how to implement them. The first mechanism, token introspection, is a mechanism for validating access token by requesting the token introspection endpoint on authorization server. The picture shows below is show the steps of token introspection. At first, application does API request with the access token issued by Keyclock, and then Camel validates the, validates the access token by requesting the token introspection endpoint on Keyclock, and then Camel will forward the API request only if access token is valid. Otherwise, Camel will deny the request with 401 HTTP status code. So I let me show you how Keyclock supports the token introspection. Keyclock provides a token introspection endpoint to receive token introspection request. After receiving the token introspection request, Keyclock inspects the access token with several steps, including validate the session linked with the access token. Session is a data structure used in Keyclock for storing users' login information. Access token is generated from session and every access token is linked with one session. Access token and the linked session have the same value of their validities. So if the linked session is validated to invalid, the access token also will be validated to invalid even if its expiration time hasn't been reached. After introspecting the access token, Keyclock returns a token introspection response in JSON format. And the picture shows below uh, shows the token introspection on Keyclock. At first, Keyclock receives token introspection request and then Keyclock int introspects access token by validating its signature, issuer, expiration time, issued ID, and linked session. And after, after this step, it returns a token introspection response to Camel. So I let me show you how to develop the token introspection in Camel. Camel. To implement, implement token introspection, we can use a TTP4 component provided by Camel to send the token introspection request and receive the token introspection response. Component is used for communicating with external system. Among them, a TTP4 component is used for communicating with external system by using a TTP protocol. As a result of implementing token introspection, 
the API request with an invalid access token within its expiration time will be deleted with a 401 HTTP status code. That is meaning the drawback one is overcome. Now, I will, let me show you the second me mechanism. Scope is a mechanism for limiting an ap application's access to API. The granted scopes to the application is included in the access token. Checking of scope can be used for managing API access. If required, scope of API request is not included in the scopes linked with access, lo access token, the request will be deleted. And the steps is also shown at, uh, on the on the picture. I, the first step is application does API request with access token, and then camel checks the scopes linked with access token, and at last camel forward uh, will forward the API request if required scope exists. Otherwise. Camo will then need the request with 403 HTTP status code. And let me show you the how KeyClock supports the scope. KeyClock can bring the scope that is required for API into the access token when it shows access token. As the picture shows, one or more scopes can be requested can be requested, but uh, one or more scopes can be requested by specifying them in request parameter. Pa parameter. For example, specify scope equal read in request param parameter. The scope's request will be included in the access token issued by KeyClock. We can see in, in the response JSON, the read scope is included in access token. Let me show you how to develop the scope check in Camel. To implement scope check, we can use processor provided by Camel. Processor is used for treating the message that's flowing in Camel. Camel is providing lots of kinds of processors by default. And you can also custom customize a processor by implementing the processor interface. In this time, processor can extract scopes from access token and check if the required scopes are included. As a result of implementing scope check, the API request without granted authority will be deleted with a 403 HTTP status code. That is meaning the drawback two is overcome. Here's the last mechanism. OS MTLS is a mechanism for preventing token stealing attacks. It's used client certificate to confirm if the access token is granted to the OS client that makes the API request. And, and this picture showed the steps of OS MTLS. At first, application does token request with client certificate. And then KeyClock will issues will issue an access token with a hash of the client certificate. Then application will do API request with access to token and and its client certificate. After receiving the request, Camel will compile the hash value of the client certificate with the hash included in access token and will forward the API request if client certificates are matched. Otherwise, it will then need the request with 403 HTTP status code. Let me show you how KeyClock supports OS MTLS. KeyClock can calculate the hash value of client certificate and bring it into the access token when it issues access token. At first, application does, does, uh, 
request a uh, access token with applications client certificate and key group will issues a uh, access token have a member called x5t sharp s256 and its value and the value of this member is the hash of client certificate And let me show you how to develop OSP MTLS in Camel. To implement OSP MTLS, we also can use processor. In this time, processor will calculate the hash value of client certificate and compare with it with uh, X5T sharp S256 value extract from access token. As a result of implement Maintaining OSM MTLS, the API request with a stolen token will be dented with a 403 HTTP status code that is meaning the drawback three is overcome. Yes, that's all of my that's all of my presentation. And this is the uh, conclusion. Cam Camo and Kiklo can perform API management infrastructure. And also, the API management infrastructure can protect itself by using token insurance and management. There are also three drawbacks of its security. With the enhancement with Kiklo, Camo can be developed, developed to overcome the drawbacks. That's all of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please, 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 uh, please ask and I will answer it for you. We do lots of works on Kicklock. So if you are interested in Kicklock, you can ask an, any question about Kicklock or the API management infrastructure we, as, we, we, as our proposal. Yes, Kicklog is an open source and it has a sub support version called Red Hat Single Sign On. It's provided by, it's supported by Red Hat, Red, Red Hat and and uh, Kicklog is its uh, open source software. Here we go. Yes, there's lots of predefined processors, such as such as such as the uh, how to say it, such as to change the body of the request or change the header of the request or anything else. The processors can change the, change the request body or, re or request uh, headers uh, in, uh, in the camel. Uh, we also can write them by ourselves. I will answer the first uh, question. Did, did I use Camel K or Cam Cam Camulet components? Uh, 
and I didn't use uh, I didn't use Camel K. I want to uh, do some research on it, but now I didn't use it. And I don't know what what Camel Light is. And any processor implemented in Camel? Yes, I I. I did you do do you mean uh, that I I'm uh, developing the processor by myself in Camel? Yes, I did. I did it. I write lots of processors to treating the message and lots of use cases. The question from Mr. Rickward, uh, I will confirm it. Yes, that, that thank you for sharing the, the information. Yes, that's the processor is. And you can, you can confirm it it, uh, all information of it on Camel homepage, the homepage of Camel, and every 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 predefined processors detail will be confirmed in it. Okay, from the first, uh, I think in this time I didn't show some examples. I will show some some code in next time or in another chance. And and yes, the last question: resource of information. The HTTP common co co component is an is a predefined function. Yeah, it's a is provided by Camel by default by default. It not it just uh, writes the XML XML file. It's called Camel context, and I you I I can use a uh, Component by the by writing the context. Okay. okay, I want to see. I want to show you. Uh, some code, but but in seed time, I I didn't pr prepare this code, so very sorry. I yeah, I I I know. Yes, I will prepare it for next time or an another chance. Yeah. In my presentation, my point is to show how can our how can our proposal can do how 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 it can do, but how to the but the code I I didn't pre pre prepare it yeah I see. Of course, uh, we we test uh, the API management infra infrastructure, and it works. I see. 
Okay, I I think you you use Java DSL, isn't it? Uh, in this time, I use use this exam. I use a uh, uh, blueprint blueprint DSL based XML, but it's all the same. All the same, I think. And and to overcome the first uh, the first drawback, I use HTTP four component and uh, and uh, and just use a component, but not no no not not how to say no no uh, uh, not not customize and interface, but to overcome the second. And the third drawback, I use uh, processors, all customized by myself, and I will sh I will share the code in in the future. I think. And there and there is ten minutes left. Any other questions? Okay, if there's no another uh, any other questions, I, I want to finish these sessions. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for listening my presentation.